Thank you very much, Mr. Pöch, ladies and gentlemen. Clarification is indeed a key building block for the task that lies ahead of us. And it is something that my entire Board of Management team and I myself have committed to. Because if we draw the right conclusions from past mistakes, Volkswagen will only be a, a better company, truly. And this is what we're working towards. And we're determined to restore Volkswagen excellent reputation and uh, we will do so we will and we want to lead this great company into a better future there are many facets to this task you may recall that I presented a five-point plan for the realignment of the group back at the end of October and for me all the five priorities are equally important the first priority on this list is to provide effective technical solutions for our customers. And of course, our customers also want to know how these manipulations came about. And more particularly, and rightly so, they want us to put their vehicles uh, to rights as quickly as possible. And I'll come back to that in a moment. Now, then Mr. Perch has already talked at length about the second priority, establishing the truth, and obviously it has very high importance for us in the Board of Management. And that is why we have done everything in our power to make sure that internal auditing could really work as independently as possible. And let me also add one more point. When in early November we uncovered implausibilities in CO2 data for some vehicle models, well, that certainly did not make any situation any easier. The fact that this was uncovered by our own investigations and that we went public at a very early stage, that also demonstrates that uh, we are absolutely determined to engage in this process of what we call clarification and transparency. May I also make one more comment here at this point. As we have announced yesterday, we have assigned operational responsibility for the full clarification of the diesel issue to my colleague Francisco Javier Garcia Sanz. So it is in very good hands indeed. At the same time, by appointing a group board member for this task, we are actually documenting how important it is for us that we make progress swiftly. Points number three to five on my list of priorities all relate to the fundamental realignment of the group that we have already initiated. We are renewing our structures, we are renewing our mindset, and the way we do things. And we are also redefining our targets. In other words, we are evolving our strategy for the next 10 years. These five points also have a double message to them. We are doing everything we can to overcome the present situation. But we will not allow this crisis to paralyze us. Quite on the contrary, we are using it as a catalyst for change that Volkswagen needs. For me, it's important to make clear that this five-point plan is not a declaration of intent. It sets the guidepost for our actions. It is truly our agenda. It's our yardstick, if you will. That holds true for Volkswagen, but this is also true for me personally. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Perch has already set out the details of how we are uh, putting our words into action as far as we are getting to the bottom of events. Uh, now, in the following, what I'd like to do is to explain to you how we are working on all of the other issues with the same intensity. Let me therefore begin with an outline of the technical solution for our customers who are truly at the center of everything we do. At Volkswagen. For all the three European variants of the EA189 engine, we now have robust solutions. And we have also received the all clear for all of these solutions by the KBA, the Federal Motor Transport Authority. In other words, that means that we can make sure that all of the models affected in Europe will have one and the same emission strategy on both the test bed and in real life driving. And of course, they now 
naturally also comply with all emission legislation. Also, the outlay for implementing the solution in terms of technology, in terms of workshop time, uh, is financially manageable. May I also take a moment to thank our engineers who have quite literally been working day and night for weeks now. And on behalf of the entire Board of Management, and also in my own name, I would like to express our thanks and our appreciation of their work. Now, just a quick word about these solutions themselves. The 2-litre TDI and the 1.2-litre TDI only need a software update. For the 1.6-litre TDI, a flow transformer will also be fitted in front of what is called the air mass uh, sensor. This flow transformer improves the measuring accuracy, and then when combined with a software update, it optimizes the injection volume of fuel injected, and that is a factor that has a significant impact also on the production of nitrogen oxides. Now, you and your colleagues um, have written much about this solution and the what is called mesh that involves. And we keep on hearing the same question. Well, if the solution is so simple and uh, inexpensive into the bargain, why are you only fitting it now? The answer is just as simple. First of all, this technology was not available at the time when the A189 was developed. And second, a retrofit was wasn't on the agenda until quite recently because no one knew that there was a problem with the EA 189. So, now that all the solutions for Europe are on the table, we can work to work, we can get to work putting them into practice. We are beginning now next month with the recall of the two-liter TDI, which is the variant that has the highest number of vehicles affected. And the recall for the 1.2-liter TDI is scheduled to start in the second quarter of next year. And then the implementation phase for the 1.6-liter models is planned for the third quarter of next year. And this is the last model we recall because we need an appropriate lead time for sourcing and producing the hardware that we require. As plans stand now, the entire campaign will take the whole of next year. Now, the recall obviously poses an enormous logistical challenge, but our aim is still to have completed the retrofits by the end of the year, if possible. By the way, can I remind everyone that owners do not have to contact us. Each owner will be informed whenever their vehicle will be called for the update, so they will receive that information directly. Ladies and gentlemen, the situation in the United States is unfortunately more complicated than it is in Europe. That is in part due to the much tighter nitrogen oxide levels on the other side of the Atlantic. So, retrofitting the vehicles there to meet all valid emissions limits is quite simply a much bigger technical challenge. We are in a constant and intensive dialogue with both U.S. agencies, the EPA and CARB, and we believe we have made significant progress in the recent weeks. But I trust you will understand that we can only announce our solution concepts for North America once these have been fully and finally coordinated also with the responsible authorities there. And this applies for the three generations of the TDI engine developed by Volkswagen, but it's also true for the V6 engine developed by Audi. Our customers in the US and Canada may rest assured that we will do everything we can to find technical solutions to fix the V6 engine as well, and that we will do this as swiftly as possible. Ladies and gentlemen, all our efforts to resolve the whole emissions issue are guided by one clear principle. There is to be as little inconvenience as possible to our customers, and this is what we guarantee to all of our customers. The technical solutions will, of course, be implemented free of charge. We waive any statute of limitation for the technical solution. If needed, we will provide appropriate substitute mobility, and we will also ensure transparent information for our customers at all times. I'll give you my word. Volkswagen will not rest until we have resolved this issue once and for all to the satisfaction of our customers.
ladies and gentlemen. At the same time as the clarification process is progressing, we are also implementing the optimal solutions for our customers. We are driving also the reorientation of the group resolutely forward. To avoid any misunderstandings here, I would like to make it clear that this realignment was on the cards sooner or later anyway, because the environment for our industry is rapidly changing, and because we need new answers to new questions, but now we are speeding up this process. We are doing so as a result of the pressure of current events, of course, but also because there has never been a greater willingness in our group for change than there is at present. So even though this might sound like a cliché, this crisis is most definitely also an opportunity for Volkswagen, and we intend to seize that opportunity, truly. The transformation we are seeking is quite fundamental. It affects the group structures, our mindset, uh, also something that is commonly referred to as corporate culture, and it affects the strategic targets that we set ourselves for the future. Now, does that mean everything at Volkswagen was bad in the past? No. It most definitely does not, because if that were the case, our brands and vehicles would not be so popular all over the world. The sense of solidarity among our workforce would not be the same, and we would not be in such a strong economic position. But it is precisely because things should stay that way, there has to be change. We presented an outline of our structure to you back at the end of September, and the starting point is the idea that a company of our size, our international dimension, our complexity, can simply not be managed according to yesterday's structures, particularly not in an environment like ours, which is changing so rapidly. There's new technologies, new competitors, new environmental challenges, new customer needs. Volkswagen needs to align itself even more systematically to these developments. And I'm convinced that we need now, what we need now is for Volkswagen to truly embrace corporate responsibility from within. That is why the group will be decentralized to a greater extent. Decisions must be taken at the level where they are most meaningful. You know, in the world of politics, that is called subsidiarity. And we intend to adopt precisely this principle for ourselves. So, in specific terms, that means that our brands and regions are being given more autonomy and responsibility for their business. The group board of management no longer gets involved in operational fine-tuning. Instead, it will concentrate on its own core tasks, namely to drive forward the major overarching issues, to focus on synergies, on steering, and strategy. That will also impact how we approach the technological changes that have such a massive effect on our business model. But first and foremost, I'm talking here about electrification and the digital transformation. Now, our mission, my mission, is not to engage in a race to catch up, but to proactively shape these developments. To do that, we must become more agile and more flexible, and we speed up our decision-making trajectories. Another goal of the new leadership model is we must become leaner and improve our cost efficiency. Now, one lever for that is to make the very best of leveraging the synergy potentials that this group undoubtedly has to offer. So here, yeah, I believe there's definitely room for improvement. Many of you may have asked uh, in recent years whether meaningful management of this fast-growing global group is actually possible. And that is also something I am addressing here. All of these structural changes aim to reduce the complexity of steering functions and ensure the sustainable manageability of Volkswagen. Ladies and gentlemen, we can achieve that with the leadership structure you can see on this chart. There will be no longer a sales or a uh, 
research and development and the production function at group or management level. But that does not mean, of course, that these tasks are no longer performed. But there will be a new function um, in the very capable hands of Ms. Holm and Denhardt, namely integrity and legal affairs. This is a clear sign that uh, much higher priority will be given to this issue in the future. And that is obviously true particularly in the light of recent events. But our most valuable currency is not unit sales or operating profit. Our most valuable currency is credibility and trust in our brands, in our products, and in the people who work for this company. As we recently painfully discovered, unethical or illegal behavior destroys that trust. We have no intention of repeating that experience. On the right-hand side of the chart, you can see the brand groups for Audi and the luxurious sports cars. Here, we're bringing together what belongs together. We will leverage greater synergies through closer cooperation in the brand groups, just we were already doing in the truck and bus unit. China, as a region, will have its own group board member because of the crucial importance of this market for our company. Now, of course, this chart only provides a rough outline. It does not present the details and the underlying principles. Now, take my own function, for example. We are cutting the number of direct reports to the CEO from more than 30 to 19. So as a result, I will be able to concentrate more closely on the essentials. That includes uh, digitization in particular. If you will, that's a topic for the boss. Obviously, I might be working on digitization on my own. You are aware, of course, that we've recruited Johann Jungwert an acknowledged expert and one of the few cross-border commuters who travel back and forth across the boundaries between the classical automotive business and the digital world of Silicon Valley. And we need people like that to successfully master the digital transformation. And something you can only guess from the structure chart as well is the scale of the staff reorganization that has already taken place in the group in recent months and that we have accelerated over the last few weeks. Now, that not only applies for the group board of management, as Mr. Perch has pointed out, but also for large sections of top management. I have put together the most important changes here in this chart for you. And I believe the facts really speak for themselves. Since the beginning of 2015, there have been six out of ten new appointments to the Group Board of Management. Seven of our brands have uh, new CEOs. And at the level of the Brand Board of Management, there have been a total of 12 new appointments. And I have seven new colleagues adding departments in my own function on the CEO level. And uh, these will be our colleagues that have been added to the organization. So the team to tackle the challenge of the coming months and years is now in place. We will be working out the details of the new structure with this team in the first quarter of 2016. Or, to be more precise, we will be defining processes, appointing committee members and realigning the committees themselves, as well as setting out the details of the relationship between the group and the brands and the regions. The entire group will then be fully integrated in the new structure by the beginning of 2017. But that will not be enough to bring about the transformation we need. We can have the greatest minds and the best organization, but that is all in vain if we don't have the right mindset and the right mentality. So, when we talk about a new mindset, it is worth remembering that the Volkswagen Group has many strengths that we can build on and that indeed we want to preserve. Our deep-rooted quest for quality, the way our employees identify with our vehicles, the strong sense also of social responsibility that Volkswagen has always stood for. 
teilweise auch Denkweisen eingebaut. At the same time, that some ways of thinking that I do not condone have also taken root here. Hierarchical thinking, departmental and brand egoism, covering up conflicts of interests or flaws. Well, we must put all that behind us. Instead, I would like to see more open discussion, um, arguments too, if that is what is needed to move forward. And I want to see better cooperation in our group. My aim, my aim is for us also to adopt a different approach, a constructive approach to mistakes in the future. Each one of us must take one thing on board. Mistakes are allowed, provided we understand them as an opportunity for learning. To achieve that, Volkswagen does not need uh, yay sayers, but rather managers and technicians who fight for their convictions fight for their projects with good arguments. We have an entrepreneurial mindset and an entrepreneurial approach. So my appeal, therefore, is directed at the inquisitive, at the unconventional, at the pioneers, people who dare to follow their instinct and are not put off merely by the thought of the possible consequences of potential failure, now more than ever. So, in a nutshell, the future at Volkswagen belongs to the brave. You could say that we need a bit more of Silicon Valley, coupled with our competence of Wolfsburg, Ingolstadt, Stuttgart, and the other group locations. Obviously, the crucial question then is, how do we bring this new spirit into a group with 600,000 employees across the globe? But my answer is pretty pragmatic. Just do it. First, as the management team, it's our job to get on with it. Change can and change will only come about if we live this new openness from within, if we nurture, if we foster this new culture of mistakes and this new willingness for cooperation between the board and management. Second, we must breathe life into this new identity to make it tangible, both inside the company and externally. That calls for clear signals. Just doing the talking is not enough. We have to produce hard evidence that we have our feet firmly planted on the ground. And third, we must create new structures and platforms that specifically encourage this new collaborative exchange between our employees, and in particular between employees and management. Over the past two and a half months, we have already launched quite specific initiatives and measures that clearly demonstrate where we are headed. One example is our new open door policy. An office door that is open means open interaction. We want to encourage our employees to do the same. In any event, my door is always wide open. Another example is reforming our air services. It's true, a group like ours needs an efficient air service. But uh, let us be honest, Volkswagen does not need its own Airbus, and this is why we will be selling the aircraft. And that also is uh, part and parcel of the number of uh, employees that travel the world. Many of our commissions and committees abroad uh, were overstaffed, and uh, if we streamline there, we need fewer people to travel by air. So, greater humility would also do as well at motor shows. I'm sure our products themselves can do all the convincing that is necessary, so they speak for themselves and convince also our customers. Now, here's another lever. We've begun streamlining our corporate committees and other bodies. I cannot allow dozens of highly paid experts to spend more time sitting on steering committees than working on key vehicle projects together with their own teams. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, I sense the wish among the entire team to discover the wholehearted pride in their company, in our company. This is the best prerequisite for genuine, for sustainable change, such as that we are seeking to bring about now. 
As I've already indicated, this change also includes redefining our targets. In other words, it also embraces our strategy. Eight years ago, we sent a very strong signal with our Strategy 2018, a signal to the automotive world, but all, above all, to our employees. Now, in terms of the key targets of our strategy 2018, we were making good progress. And our Future Tracks program has already laid important foundations for a more sustainable future and greater efficiency. And we are now building on all of that. In the first step, we have defined three strategic focus topics for the group, digitization, sustainability and integrity. We will now be bringing these topics to life step by step with the projects, among other things. We are currently planning a group-wide digitization campaign and a massive expansion of our electric fleet of vehicles with 20 additional electric cars and plug-in hybrids by 2020. So we will be ready to announce details soon. So we can say we are realigning Volkswagen now in terms of strategy and technology. We are delighted to welcome Thomas Sedron, who is one of the most respected managers in the auto industry, to help us do that. He will be spearheading the strategy process as it is driven forward. So, when we present our new strategy 2025 in the middle of 2016, as announced, you will find the answers to questions such as how we intend to make the product portfolio of our brands even more forward-looking, even more profitable, how we can significantly increase our revenues outside the current core business, for example, through intelligent mobility services, or how we can utilize the digital digitization potential better than uh, existing and also new competitors, or how we can offer piloted driving on a wider scale earlier than other manufacturers do, or how we can repair our damaged reputation for sustainability, for example, with the e-campaign that I've just mentioned a moment ago, and also by integrating sustainability issues in our core business strategy. So, as you can see, we have not given up our claim to leadership in our industry, but we have given this claim a different definition. Our goal is to proactively shape the future of mobility with courage and determination. We will have to pull out all the stops to do that, but we most definitely have the potential. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to finish by summing up where we stand in overcoming the present crisis and realigning the Volkswagen Group. We're working hard on all of the five points we have set ourselves, and we are making good progress. We've made significant progress with point number one, i.e. helping our customers affected by the emissions issue as swiftly as possible, the technical solutions are are in place, well, at least for Europe, and that's for the lion's share of the vehicles affected. Implementation of these solutions will begin in a few weeks. Point two on the list, clarification is also progressing, and we have already drawn far-reaching conclusions for the future. This clarification process will take some time. Incidentally, a comparison with similar cases in other companies, say, show that we are within the usual time frame. We're also moving forward fast with a third point, implementing the new structure. The team for the future is in place. Committees and processes will follow over the coming months. Well, it will take longer to firmly enshrine a new mindset in our group, but we can have no illusions about that. But we're not wasting any time here either. And, and one thing I find particularly pleasing in many discussions and everyday situations, there is now a sense that people at Volkswagen are seizing the opportunities that new mindset brings, and they're setting out on this new path. And work on the fifth and final point, which is strategy 2025, will be completed by mid-2016. I'm confident we will be presenting you with a, with a very convincing concept.
At the same time as we are addressing all these issues, we are of course also working very hard on day-to-day -day operations, and that is uh, at present a particularly challenging task. Where does the Volkswagen Group stand economically today? Naturally, there has been uh, plenty of print and speculation about the impact the crisis has had or could still have on our business. And we are watching that very closely, as you can imagine. But the big question is how our customers will react. Obviously, a scandal of this scale is is bound to have repercussions. But experience from comparable cases also shows that deliveries following a severe crisis recover relatively quickly if, and this truly is the critical factor, if customer relations management is appropriate in the given situation. We're doing everything we can to guarantee that and to limit the fallout. So far, the positive news is that the massive slump that some feared earlier has not occurred. Our operational business is still in line with expectations. So today, two and a half months after the crisis broke, we do not see any reason to change the adjusted annual forecast we issued at the end of October. At the same time, the picture for markets and brands is very mixed. Overall, the situation is certainly not dramatic, but, as expected, it is tense. To put it plainly, we are fighting for every customer and for every car. Brand sales managers have launched measures to stabilize the situation. And if we succeed, and I'm cautiously optimistic that we do, then the impact on production will be within reasonable limits. If, however, despite all our efforts, that is not the case, we are in a position to respond appropriately at any time. As you're already aware, we have taken the first step with regard to investments. We have capped investments in property, plant and equipment at 12 billion euros for 2016. Now, that is 1 billion down on the average of previous years. But at the same time, we've also shortened the planning horizon by one year. So we're not planning too far ahead. One thing, though, is clear. Anything that is not absolutely necessary now will be cancelled or postponed. And we will definitely not be economizing on our future. And we're looking after our money because we cannot exactly estimate the financial consequences of the crisis. As you know, we've already made certain provisions. We are fortunate that Volkswagen has a very solid financial basis indeed. And we have also concluded additional credit lines to cover all contingencies. It's gratifying to note that our discussions have shown that Volkswagen's good reputation on the capital markets is still intact. And the most recent developments in our share price are also encouraging. Over the past two months, shares have recovered by around 40% from the low immediately following the outbreak of the crisis. Now, we see that as a sign that investor confidence is returning. Obviously, people believe we have the situation under control and can master the crisis with our own resources. And it will not come as a surprise to you that we see things pretty much in the same way. Ladies and gentlemen, even though the current situation is serious, the company will not go to pieces because of it. On the contrary, we have a clear mission. We want to create a new, a better, a stronger Volkswagen, a company that successfully makes the transition to the new automotive world based on its innate strength, a company that now unleashes new energy and leverages its enormous potential even more effectively, and not least, a company 
whose clear values form the basis for sustained success. Thank you very much uh, for your attention for the time being. Mr. President, myself would be pleased now to answer your questions.